Let's finish our tiny, tiny Peter Rabbit junk journal. <laughs> Hi, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. Thank you so much for joining me again. For this one here, I used the back side of a paper pad. So I had just cut out a piece from here. I don't know the thickness exactly, but yeah, you can see it's like the regular th thickness you would have on a back of some cardstock. It's not super thick, but it is, it is quite sturdy. So I'm just going to cut out a junk, a chunk, and then we'll cut it to the size we need. With this one here, I just cut one piece and then scored these two lines and bent it. I think with this one, because it is it is quite bigger. I mean, not a lot, but it is a little bit bigger and it is wider. I think I want to cut out three pieces. So front and back cover and the spine separately because I think that will make it flip open better. So let's determine the height. I want it to be just a little bit bigger than the pages, not too much, just a tiny bit. So I'll go ahead and cut that. And then I'll just measure the width of the spine. I'll do exactly the same as our hidden spine. And then I need to determine how wide I want it to be. And I want it to be a little wider than the widest page. So like this. So I'll cut out two of these and one of this. So I have my three pieces here and just like with a large journal, I'm going to connect them. And I'm gonna use a little piece of a Tyvek. So this is the material which is unterrible, used for like express mailings like UPS, DHL. And you can also find these, I think, on Amazon. If you don't have this, you can also probably use tape or, of course, a piece of fabric. I have this, so I'm going to use this. So I want it to be the same height and I want it to be just a little bit wider than just about, you know, like this. And I'll cut, do I need two of these? Yeah, I'll cut two of these, one for the front, one for the back, just to make sure. So I'll move these down. Then I'll put some on the edge of this one. Making sure to leave a little gap so it can fold nicely. Like that. And the same thing on the other side. You can do this with any glue. I'm just going into those creases. You can also do that with a credit card type thing or a ruler. So now we have this and I'm trying to think, does it need it for the front? Yeah, why not? I have it already cut. So I'll do the same thing for the front. So this time I'll just put glue on this whole thing. And also go in the creases. I think that will make a nice and sturdy cover. Let's just see how this will fit in. Yeah, this is gonna be good. There's plenty of space here. I chose these fabrics. I think one of these should work well for the cover for the theme that we have. But in order to determine which one is the right one, I also need to consider what I want to add on top of the cover because I want to add an image on this. I don't want to do what I did here. Just with the word, I want to add an image of Peter Rabbit. So I printed this journal page again and I printed this at 30% because I think this image here now has a good size for the cover. So I'm going to fussy cut this and maybe I have a punch or something that I can maybe put an oval behind him. 
maybe with this background. And then that will help us determine what works best behind him. So I checked all my punches and none of them were small enough for this cover. I did, however, find a few dies that are small enough. So I punched these out, inked them up, and maybe we can add one of these behind him to kind of just give him a little bit of a background. I think it would have to be this one. The others are kind of small. Yep, I like that one. So now we have to see which background or which fabric would fit to that. That's definitely too much checkers going on. So we'll have the same issue with this one. So those are out. This is weird too with the stripes. This might be super cute. This is a bit busy. This would work. This might also be too busy. So yeah, that one would be cute. But I really like this one as well. Maybe the blue would be a nice contrast on this yellow. I don't know. Maybe a less busy part in the front. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe this would be the better choice. Yeah, I think I'll go with this one. So let's glue Peter on his background. I'll use my textile glue. I don't think it's really necessary, but you use what glue you have. If it's just a PVA glue of some kind, I think that is totally going to be, be fine. Just be sure to spread it out either with a paintbrush or your fingers because you don't want to see that glue through your fabric. Make sure it's spread evenly. That is the one thing you need to do if you use fa if you glue fabric, you always have to spread out your glue evenly first. So and now I will place that in the middle and then we'll cut down the fabric. Before we cut it, I again want to go into these creases. Okay, now I'm gonna cut in even border all around. Even-ish. Next, I will cut off the corners, just leaving a little bit, not too much just a tiny bit by the corner and now let's just glue down all the edges again I'm going to make sure to spread out my glue Just adding a little bit more glue to the corners to make sure they stick down where needed. There, all the corners are neat. And we still need to cover the inside. And I'm gonna use the same paper for the inside that we have here and on the inside of the spine here so then that will match it doesn't have to but I just have it here so why not use that on the other one I added fabric as well I used a different kind of fabric on the inside than on the outside so I just need to measure it to be slightly smaller than the cover I've inked up the edges as well and now I'm just gonna glue that down Again, going into the creases. Okay, I really think I need to let this dry now before I do anything else. Clamp this together 
and make sure it dries like this for a little bit. Actually, while it's still drying, I think we can still work on the outside cover a little bit. And I just had an idea, rather than just putting him on here like this, I think that's kind of boring. I just found this piece of lace and I was thinking, what if we just wrap this around, around the spine as well, and then cut it off here. And then we put him on. I think that looks much cuter, don't you think? So let's do that. I hope you agreed with me just now. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really cute. Okay, let's glue him on. And then I think we really need to let this dry. Don't want to ruin it now. <laughs> How cute is that? <laughs> I noticed here, do you see he has this cute little butterfly on his nose, but you can hardly see it. So I think it would be cute if we would make that more visible by adding another one on top. So I printed a tiny, tiny butterfly and I cut it in half, but I cut it in half so that the body would still be intact. So it could basically be a butterfly that we're just seeing the front half of when it's flying, kind of like the one on here. And as you might be able to see, I again painted the wings, this is just the tip of the wings with my Van Gogh 103 in deep gold. So I think if we add this, on his nose on top of the other one then we can see it a lot better yep i think that's better what i really love on this journal is this little safety pin here with the two pieces of fabric and i want to do something similar on this one so i found another tiny tiny safety pins pin sometimes you can find these in like the travel sets that you sometimes have for sewing they might have these or i'm sure you can also find some online but i i don't remember where i got this one from what you can also do is of course if you have one of these cool brads these are from tim holtz this one would actually work here as well and then you can attach anything or you could also just use a simple brad and poke a hole and then maybe you can find a, one that's a little bigger because then what you can do is just also poke a hole through whatever you want to use to attach and then just poke it right through and then you can have some things hanging down so i want a piece of this lace then i want a piece of this golden lace trying to decide where is the best place to cut so that it won't fall apart too much and then i was thinking i could also add a piece of this beautiful one i got this one locally so that makes three pieces i think this one will be on the bottom it's the largest then i'll add the white one and then the gold. And then we'll just try to pick that through the lace that we have here. Super cute. <laughs> and then I think it would also be really cute to have headbands at the top and the bottom here that will peek out here from right in between the hidden spine and the real spine. I did not do that on this one. I didn't think about it. Or actually, I couldn't do it because I sewed the signatures directly into the spine. But with this one, we now have the opportunity to do that. And I want to try using this lace here because I think it should work out that just the top bit here would peek through. I actually cut a bit too much almost. I'm 
Yeah, I think that's cute. Let's see. <laughs> so cute. Maybe just on the top. Yeah, I'll just do it on the top. Why not? Who says that we have to do top and bottom? I haven't seen the headband police recently, so I think it should be okay. <laughs> Before I glue this in, I think it's easier to make the pockets now. So I definitely want one in the back because I made a boo-boo here and I want to cover that up. And I have a scrap of wallpaper left and I think this is really cute together with the colors we have here and I would love to make the pocket with flaps here so that it's a really good pocket it's just a bit challenging to actually <laughs> make the flaps that tiny but let's see if we can make that work so that means I need it a little bit wider than what I want it to be and then I will try to fold into flaps, tiny, tiny flaps. Yep. And then we also need the bottom flap. Okay, and now we need to cut off all the excess. So I'll just cut diagonally here and here and cut these flaps at a diagonal as well. And lastly, I want to make an indent in the top middle. And I think for this size, I'm just going to use my hole punch to make a half circle. Now we have an actual pocket here that we can really stick something into rather than just gluing it down on three sides, which would make the pocket so much smaller. I should have, of course, inked this up. Oh, I'm not thinking. Maybe I can still ink up the top a little bit without inking up the background. Yep, all good. <laughs> For the front, I would like to make a fabric pocket and i want to use this cute fabric it is so vibrant i just love it and this time i'm just going to glue the three sides down because i i'm not gonna make flaps with this fabric maybe we can add another little piece of this somewhere else in the journal Now you remember maybe that we have this tiny, tiny ephemera that we printed together with the kit. Again, all the links for the Digital Collage Club will be below in the description box as well as the name of this kit. It is the Peter and Friends Journal Kit that I have printed super tiny. And uh, please go see my first part of this video to see how I printed it this small and how I did my settings and everything and the size. All that you can find in the first video so this is another part of that same wallpaper and i think we can just use this and here's some more bits to back the bits of ephemera with because of course they are too flimsy and my thought is to use the biggest ones that i have here for the two pockets so i think this one you can hardly see what the image is <laughs> can go in here and in the back side I want to add this postcard because that will go nicely in there so I want to back both of these with the wallpaper I didn't make these in the past because I like making things that you can actually use that you can actually write in and, and you know make collages in and etc and these of course are too small so I never saw the point in making them, but now that I've made one for someone else from Maud, I just fell in love with it so much that I just really felt I need these in my life, even if I don't use them. 
but they are just so cute and they can just be inspiration or they can just be there for cuteness sake okay so that's the front one wallpaper in the back and we'll stick that one there maybe we'll even add a little hole with a tag topper because i think that looks a bit too empty and then this is the one for the back i'll stick that like that yeah we need a tag topper here so we need to make a tiny hole i just changed my mind i'm not going to make a hole because tying a tiny bow around that is going to be quite difficult so i think i would rather cut out a piece from this lace and then we can just maybe glue that on the top somehow i'm not convinced this is the best solution but let's try it it's kind of weird <laughs> No, it's fine. Actually, in here it looks cute. We could add something on the top. We have this here. We could just fold a piece around like that. Yeah. Okay, we will just let that be for now. While that's drying, maybe we can add some ephemera to our pages. For example, on this one here. I'm going to take my tweezers. We could maybe add this little Peter Rabbit here. And maybe underneath, we could add some lace. Yes, that's all it needs. <laughs> here we need something. On this one, maybe we can just add another piece of this fabric, because why not? You wouldn't need to do anything else to it. It is just super cute like this. Let's put something here. We have this little one here and maybe we'll add a little piece of something on top then. We have these tiny, tiny pieces. <laughs> and of course we have to add things to our pockets. We will do that afterwards add something here could add this i think there's a squirrel on it it's really hard to see yeah looks like a squirrel can i bring over my little box of small pieces to use oh i have these here that are fun as well these are inner pieces of some die cuts that are not meant to be used but of course they are cute why wouldn't you use them maybe the tiniest scrap of fabric as well so you are just making collages on a smaller scale <laughs> then we have another one like this and i have this tea bag tag from my tea last night i'm just gonna glue it down not think about it too much i love using tea bag labels then maybe we add one of these again that's the wallpaper it does help to have tweezers it's not a must but it is helpful whoops and I just got these from Amazon in Germany. I just looked for tweezers gold because <laughs> I wanted gold ones. I actually didn't want them sparkly. I thought they were matte. And I got a set of these two. Beside the fact that I have black ones that I currently can't find, I had broken off one of the tips of the black ones. So I needed new ones.
Maybe this needs just a little tiniest piece. Yeah, it does. Hopefully. It's... <laughs> I love these tiny pieces. I don't know why. I don't like adding a, like a whole lot of lace, but little accents are just adorable. Yes, better now. We also need a little piece for our little envelope in the center here. And I think this one will actually be good because it has this little tab-like thing and I think that will make it easier to pull out. I have already backed it with the same wallpaper. So we can just slide that in here and see, because of that, it is just a little bit easier to take it out. We have another one of these. Let's see if we can find another scrap. This is a napkin actually, but it is quite dark. I could put some gesso over it. Yeah, why not? I'll grab some glue stick and then we'll add some gesso on top. Why not just do mixed media in here as well? <laughs> So I'm just going to use my glue stick for this. It's the easiest way to decoupage a napkin. And I'll just dab a little bit of gesso on it with my finger. <laughs> this was perhaps a bit much. You can't see any of the napkin. But I just have to be gentle rubbing it off so I don't rub the napkin off because of course we didn't let it dry. Be very gentle. Yes, that looks pretty cool. So I need to let that dry, unfortunately. Okay, I think it's dry enough to kind of keep working on. So what do we put here as a focal point? Oh, I don't know why I have this in here, but this is perfect. A little bit too big, but oh, that's so cute. I have no idea where this is from. That's adorable. And I see some gold, beautiful gold paper. Maybe we can add a strip behind it. Oh, I like it, I like it. Yes, that's exactly what we'll do. How fun is it to just use two or three pieces of scraps to have a cute collage? <laughs> This is such a great way to use up scraps, but I think it's going to take, I don't know how many books <laughs> to make a real dent in your scraps with this method. <laughs> there, how cute. Oh, it says sweet next to it, so that's perfect. <laughs> and then remember, we have this that we have left over from our headband. What if we try to make this into a little tab? Tiniest tab ever. Let's see if we can make this stick. <laughs> Just when you think it can't get any cuter. <laughs> I would also like to add a piece of this fabric on one of the pages. Okay, let's find a pinch. Either right on the back side there. Or we'll go to this one. I don't have a brown one here, but this is kind of blah, huh? I could just add it here. I have this little book here where I just recovered the original cover and it used to be a postage stamp album that I got at the flea market and I keep some of my smaller ephemera in here so I just want to see if there's something here that we could use. These are all from the Your Creative Studio. I mean, we could cut out a little mushroom like this or use maybe a part of this. That is possible. We could maybe even just use a piece of washi on one of the pages. Why don't we do that? Because these are really cute. These are also from Your Creative Studio. And there's some like tickets that I have just stamped. They're a bit big. This is all your creative studio, these tiny stickers. Of course, these tiny stickers might work. Actually, there's a rabbit here. We should totally add this rabbit. You see him? These are adorable. These are just 
die cuts that I have used on some books. These are super cute, but they are too big, unfortunately. These are some mini punches that I have, these here. And these are some dies, these two shapes. We can maybe use some of this in a background of something. So maybe this one. And maybe we can add these florals to one or two of the pockets. This one and this one. There's a hello, which I think is going to be too big, or maybe not. If not, that we can add it. Oh, it will work. We can totally add that. These are from Digital Collage Club as well, these smaller ones. These are some of the ones that I have used in the other journal. Maybe we can use this one and this one, but cut down. Let's look for a page where we can add the hello. Maybe here on the back, or is that too, no, that's too brown on brown. Maybe on the book page, yep. Then let's add a washi piece. I'm sure I haven't covered all the empty pages yet. I wanna leave the map page, because that's kind of fun. We could add some washi here. We could even make that into a pocket, like a, I don't mean a pocket, I mean a tuck spot. You know, just glue it on the side, cut it down a little bit. And then we make another half circle with our hole punch. Yes, how cute. I should count how many times in this video do I say cute. <laughs> I think it's a lot. So I'm just going to leave the backing on because that gives it some nice stiffness. Oh, we could put one of these ephemera pieces in there. Maybe this little blue tag that has a good size. I'll just slip that in there. Where else? We need something here. But I love that tab. It's super sweet. See, now I said sweet, not cute. <laughs> Shall we add some owls? How about this guy? He's pretty cool, but he needs to be cut out. Duh, oh, he's gorgeous, but he needs another background. I found this little map piece that I have used a another punch on. Just makes me so happy to use these pieces that I've had for a while and just haven't used. And it's so nice to know that now they finally have a great home. They are loved and cherished. Well, they were loved and cherished before, but still now they have a special place. I love that. I think this might be my favorite page. There's another one. Should we add the bunny to this one maybe? Again, he's going to need a background and he needs some cutting around because that is way too much white edge. I really don't like that. Isn't that better? I think that's so much better. Okay, he needs a background. I have these wallpaper bits here. I always love the texture. So either that, that would be super sweet, not cute. No, it would be cute. <laughs> Or this one, this is also a die cut. Oh, I think I'll go with that one. It's just seem, it just seems a little bit more whimsical, I guess. <laughs> I'm not even gonna bother taking that backing off. <laughs> I can't stop smiling and laughing. Could do something, oh, this is kind of tearing this book page. These book pages are very brittle. Okay, so let's do something on top of that so that it doesn't keep tearing. What about these guys? And then with the background. Let me cut these out and see what that would look like. 
yes they fit perfectly let's see what we can do for a background i think i have yeah i have another one of these yellow wallpaper weird round shapes that could kind of be like a sun behind them or the moon even the moon we can always add another tab there as well oh maybe we'll do that then i'll put it a little further down so that we have some space for a tab could make one out of this tiny scrap make it even more tiny i'm pretty sure i have never worked with pieces this tiny before <laughs> should have maybe first checked if that will work here yet but it will thankfully put it right over the tear And we have the back side of this one that is still empty. Finally, I have this page here that still has an empty back. So that's the last one. And I found this here. This was a die cut gone wrong. So I might as well cut out one of these two birds. Maybe this guy and use him on this page. I actually think he's too big and he's too dark. Don't like him there. Even if we put a lighter background. No, I don't like him there. So let's do something else. I do love this background there. We do have this small piece of lace. We could just do that. Call that done and that is cute. I think you don't necessarily need images on every page. Sometimes you just need some accents. Especially if the elements have texture, like here, you don't need anything else. That's the good thing about mini books. <laughs> there, I mean, does it really need anything else? No. And we have the cute image here. Now we, oh, there's another page. Look at that. I just realized he would go on this page. Isn't that much better than on the other page? And then we have a scrap here, which is a similar color to his head. Perfect. Done. <laughs> so now let's see if we can put something in our pockets. So we have one here. This is quite a big one. Yeah, this is quite roomy. So I think these tags will just get lost in there. I could just cut out this guy. I printed him on some 160 GSM cardstock, so he doesn't need to be backed with anything. He fits in there. He just needs to be inked up. And he can peek out a little bit so that you know that there's something in there. Okay, we have a second pocket here. I believe this is also a roomy one. Yeah. Okay, I need to find something to put in here. I found this here. This is a copy of a page of an Edith Holden book and I have used this die on it. And of course this is too big. What we really just need is the two birds. I'm hoping that I can run this through my die cut machine again. Because I don't want to lose this cute edge. I want to try to place it in like this and then for it to just cut off this the same style so i will try that and i'll show you if it works so i had secured it with two pieces of washi this back piece here looks fine the only the only thing that's missing is this little stitched edge here but i think that's okay and of course this <laughs> this edge is the wrong way around but let's see what this side looks like It's perfect. It's almost like it was meant to be like this. Oh, wow, that is so adorable. Let's see if it fits in here, hopefully. I will need to back this because it is flimsy. It's just coffee paper, coffee paper, copy paper. <laughs> like that, and I want it sticking out. Yeah, perfect. So I'm just gonna back this with something. I could use a piece of that same wallpaper on the back. 
and then just cut around that that should be fine okay let's check if it fits first yes so i'll just ink this up here's one of the top loading pockets this is of course also now too deep for these that's not gonna work they're just gonna get completely lost in here although they do look really cute peeking out if i could somehow glue it together but how would i do that like right here so it couldn't move further in that would have been a great idea how would you do that now i'm gonna try putting a glue dot <laughs> there because i really want to use these tags they're so cute This will have to dry a little bit, and I'll do the same on the other one. I believe we have a second one, right? Ah, here's the second one. Oh, and we have a whole empty page here. Look at that. Okay. Oh, this one's even more narrow. Okay, maybe I just closed the two pockets and we can't fit anything inside now. Okay, we'll let these two pockets rest a little bit. What do we do here? This is unexpected. <laughs> here, maybe I just add this cute piece of washi and be done. This time I actually took the backing off. That was quite easy. But this alone is gonna look strange. So maybe we can add another one of these ephemera pieces. That one. So lastly, on this page, we could add some pink polka dots. <laughs> that would be cute. And we could add this one then in the other pocket. This one and this one, because that is really cute. You could, of course, keep going and going, adding things also to these pages. But for the sake of this video, that would just be too much too long okay shall we check if we can get in these pockets now or if i seriously close them because <laughs> i don't know how far in that glue actually went not very oh no i think i just ruined this pocket okay well that one is closed <laughs> let's check this one. Oh no look i can see the glue it's too far up as well so that plan went very south. Yeah, if I try to open this, I'm gonna tear the paper. All right, so that's not happening. So I think I need to cover this up somehow and we can easily just add a tab or something on top. I could of course now just run away crying <laughs> and be very frustrated with myself. Nope, I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to take it as an opportunity to try something I've never tried before. So I'm just going to put a scrap piece of paper up there, which could even be like a top loading tuck spot. Let's do that. New opportunity. See, we can do it on both sides. Like this. And now let's just make sure that there is a space here. Yeah. And we could even stick our tag in there. Where are our tags? There's one. Maybe we'll put it in upside down. No, let's put it this way. There, that's actually cuter than what we had originally. <laughs> Should we add a tiny bit of lace here? I just happen to have one here. There we go. And on the front one, what I don't like here is that we actually see the glue through. I don't know why that happened. I don't know that that's gonna disappear once it dries. 
Oh, but it's cute, Peter. I don't want to cover up this whole thing. I just had an idea what we can do on this side. So I have this scrap left over and we have this piece of ephemera left over and we can just put them in on top of each other. Maybe cut this down just a little bit. And then, actually, let me just ink this up. Okay, then this one will glue over this hole. So I will just put glue on the sides here because in the middle there is nothing. And the rest we can glue down. Oh, I didn't want to glue that down. <laughs> My plan was to only glue down the top so you could still lift it to see the rest of his ears. And also this one I didn't want to glue down. What is wrong with me? <laughs> I just want the top glued. This one I think we can still save because this one I want to be able to flip up I wanted both to flip up, flip up. Okay, at least this one still kind of flips up. <laughs> okay, so that's the one side. Then we need something for this side as well. I don't want to cover up the be creative, so I'm just going to glue a piece of lace over that to cover that half circle. So this has dried in the meantime as well, and now it's sticking on it just fine. And now we need to glue this into our cover. That is almost the last step. The very last step will be to close the book up, to do a closure. And I think I'm just going to wrap around some ribbon because I, I don't want to punch any holes in it. Gonna press this down for a while make sure it closes so if we don't put anything on it it will stand like this it is not really a gator mouth it's just the way the cover is because I can easily hold it like this and it's not a gator mouth so I think that worked out really well but yeah it's because just the, the cover does that now my issue is that whatever we tie around it is gonna blindfold <laughs> poor peter and i don't know a way around that if i don't want to make holes in here and in here i could still make holes and do what i did here then nothing would be over his eyes see i have this which i have already obviously torn from a piece of fabric which i had forgotten about and i just found this so this is the perfect thing to use now if i wouldn't be covering his, his eyes this would just be absolutely perfect i could just tie it and that would just be the cutest thing but i just think it looks really weird <laughs> like this i think i'm just gonna have to make the holes i don't see any other option here i'm going to use the small hole on my crocodile thankfully that goes right through everything I'll do the same thing on the back. I will just eyeball where that is. <laughs> now I wanna say it again, it's worth investing in one of these crocodiles. They are just the best. Of course you could leave the hole like this, but it just looks so much more finished if you actually have the eyelets in. And when you buy it, it will tell you in the description what kind of eyelets you need what the sizes are you need to look for. I would really like to use this. Let's see if I can get this through. Yes, I'll tie this together. Just trying to keep the ends long enough so I can still make a bow. And then this is what it looks like once it's tied together. <laughs> I'm in love with this. This is so adorable. I just love the size. I love that it has a wide spine. It's like a little block. I love this on the back. 
I love that it has lace underneath. I love that the ribbon is frayed. So I hope you had as much fun as I did making this. Please, please make some tiny, tiny journals. <laughs> Thank you for joining me in this tiny journey. <laughs> I hope to see you back soon. Love you guys. Mwah. Mwah.